and tonight in a possible effort to shield President Biden from a congressional investigation, Director Ray is refusing to hand over that official 1023 document that purportedly describes a criminal foreign bribery scheme from Biden's time when he was vice president. Now, FBI officials have uh, been in possession of these allegations since June of 2020. They have also been in possession of Hunter Biden's laptop since December of 2019. They have seen emails and texts from Hunter Biden detailing possible foreign payouts to the big guy and half the money going to Pops and complaining about paying for Pops home repairs bills. Now, the FBI is also fully aware of the dozens upon dozens of suspicious activity reports filed to banks all linked to the Biden family syndicate. Yet no charges, no DOJ, no special counsel, no search warrants from the FBI. In fact, Chris Ray is now obstructing a congressional investigation. So you see what's happening here? This is your two-tiered system of justice, now worse than ever. Now, despite a mountain of evidence of public corruption, the FBI, the DOJ, they have been protecting and continue to protect the Biden family, just like Hillary Clinton was protected in 2016, and before that, the Clinton Foundation was protected. At the very same time, after an unprecedented SWAT-style raid at the home of former President Trump, the DOJ is apparently moving at lightning speed to prosecute Donald Trump. Why? Over some documents stored in a secure room that the FBI had had access to months earlier at Mar-a-Lago from Trump's time in the White House. Now, today, former uh, President Trump's attorney met with the special counsel, Jack Smith, and other DOJ officials in what many now believe is a precursor to an indictment, maybe as early as this week. According to reports, the federal grand jury has been hearing evidence in this case. They are expected to meet again this week. And breaking tonight, sources close to this program are also learning that there is consideration of a possible Hunter Biden indictment this week, if not the same day as a possible Trump indictment. My sources say, obviously, the Justice Department is extremely nervous this will be viewed properly as political retribution. So now the question is, how much is politics really a factor in the Biden Justice Department? Now, of course, if Trump's last name were Clinton or Biden, he'd never be charged in any document probe. His place wouldn't have gotten raided. It would have never gotten this far. Hillary, we all know, she mishandled top-secret classified material on private servers uh, likely hacked by foreign countries. She then deleted 33,000 subpoenaed emails, wiped those devices clean with something we had never heard of called bleach bit. She removed SIM cards from the phones and, and Blackberries and had them destroyed with hammers. But according to James Comey, no reasonable prosecutor would bring charges against Hillary Clinton. Now, keep in mind, another special counsel is investigating Joe Biden over the exact same issue, except Biden allegedly mishandled classified material in multiple unsecured locations, including secret documents from Biden's time, even going back as far as him being a senator. But surprise, surprise, that case appears to be going nowhere. There are no impending charges, no grand jury that we know of. And by the way, there's been no leaks at all whatsoever. In contrast, the document investigation into Donald Trump has been riddled with never-ending leaks, disclosures, including FBI photographs from inside Mar-a-Lago, all designed to embarrass and impugn the former president. This is a brazen level of political bias and corruption at the FBI and the DOJ. Now, think about it. The Biden DOJ is now preparing to charge Joe Biden's chief political opponent heading into an election year, Donald Trump, with the very same crime that he himself is under investigation for, all while Biden, you know, walks away scot-free. Now, that is what you would expect from a banana republic, not from the United States. And sadly, that extends far beyond Donald Trump, and it's been going on for quite some time. In 2005, you might recall House Majority Leader Tom DeLay. Remember, he was indicted. He was convicted in a far-left district on bogus conspiracy charges. He was sentenced to three years in prison and was forced to resign from Congress before his case was overturned and acquitted by a higher court. That was an eight-to-one decision. 
A few years later, in 2013, the IRS admitted that they were targeting conservative groups for extra uh, scrutiny and special investigations simply because of their political affiliations. And then in 2014, GOP rising star, then Virginia, Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell, he was indicted on cooked up federal corruption charges, and prosecutors attempted to put McDonnell behind bars for 12 years. He lost his job, he lost his house, he lost his marriage before the U.S. Supreme Court overturned the conviction. That was a unanimous decision. And in 2016, Donald Trump and many of his associates, they were targeted by an FBI investigation all based on a Russia hoax, a hoax propagated by the Clinton campaign and echoed all over the mainstream media mob. Countless lives were ruined, millions of dollars were spent, all in legal fees, reputations were tarnished, and many, including Trump, witnessed their privacy violated in the worst way imaginable. In case after case after case, the process is the punishment instead of investigating real crimes and building strong cases. Investigators are now putting Republicans and conservatives through hell, and that means we have a two-tier justice system. So. We have a serious problem at the FBI and the DOJ, a political rot that could destroy our republic, could shred our Constitution, meaning that there is no equal justice under the law, no equal application of our laws, no self-awareness at the DOJ and the FBI. They think they're doing great. They're getting every Republican they can, and they're going after Donald Trump. The FBI, by the way, in a statement, praised its commitment to accommodating Comer's request while denying the subpoena, 